you will, join with me in prayer. Holy and loving God, you who have created the world and all that is in it, who sustains the universe and all that is beyond it, we are humbled and awed by your majesty and grandeur. We recognize that we cannot understand you completely. We cannot comprehend the height, the breadth, and the depth of your power and your love. And yet you have chosen to love us, to be among us, to walk with us, to die for us. Lord, we ask your blessing on this university and on all who serve and study here. Help this learning community to build on its honored past, to live fully into its mission in the present, and to work toward a glorious future in transforming the hearts and minds of its students. May we all give you our best in the places where we serve, the best of our minds, the best of our hearts. We seek you, Lord, and by your presence with us make this time and all our times here on earth holy. Amen. You may be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Dawson, President Emeritus of Lincoln Memorial University, and it is now my honor and privilege to introduce members of the Platform Party. Starting with the first row to my far left, and I would ask that you hold your applause until the entire Platform Party has been introduced. Dr. David Olive, President, Bluefield College. Dr. Brian DeBusk, First Vice Chair, LMU Board of Trustees, President and CEO of DeRoyal. Dr. Gary Burgett, President Emeritus and Second Vice Chair, LMU Board of Trustees. Dr. Autry O.V. Pete DeBusk, Chairman of the Board of the LMU Trustees and Chairman of DeRoyal. Dr. Clayton Hess, President of LMU, Ms. Cynthia Witt, Vice President for University Advancement. Ms. Linda Fulce, Mayor of the City of Harrogate, Tennessee. Ms. Sherry Claiborne, Alumni Representative to the Board of Trustees. Mr. Sidney Beckman, Professor of Law, LMU Duncan School of Law. Mr. Conrad Daniels, Director, Community College Relations and Veteran Services. Mr. Joshua Houston, President, Student Government Association. And now, starting with the second row, far left, Mr. Roger Ball, LMU trustee, Mr. Don Patton, LMU trustee, Mr. Alan Neely, LMU trustee, Mr. Terry Lee, LMU trustee, Dr. Dorothy Neely, LMU trustee, Dr. Evelyn Smith, special assistant to the president for executive affairs, Mr. Terry Slusher, alumnus, class of 82, Dr. Art Brill, LMU trustee, former chief executive officer. Dr. Richard Gillespie, LMU trustee. Mr. Jerry Burnett, LMU trustee. Mr. Sam Mars III, LMU trustee. Dr. Tammy Dean, Mace Bearer, assistant dean for academics and associate professor of nursing, the Sk Kaler School of Nursing. Please give them a round of applause. And now allow me to introduce the President's Cabinet. Will you stand briefly as your name is called? Again, please hold your applause. Ms. Christy Graham, Vice President for Finance. Ms. Lisa Blair Cox, Vice President for Administration. Dr. Emil Jarsfer, Vice President for Academic Affairs. Dr. Jason Johnson, Vice President and Dean, the College of Veterinary Medicine. Dr. Anne Marie Buchanan, Assistant Professor of Social Work and President of the Faculty Senate. Dr. Travis Wright, Vice President for Academic and Student Services. The Honorable Gary Wade, Vice President and Dean, the Duncan School of Law. Dr. Brian Kessler, Vice President and Dean, the DeBus College of Osteopathic Medicine. Dr. Jody Goins, Vice President for Enrollment Athletics and Public Relations. 
Let's recognize them. And now uh, allow me to introduce school and college deans. Dr. Sylvia Lynch, the dean, Carter and Moyer School of Education. Dr. Al Adam Rollins, Dean, School of Mathematics and Sciences. Dr. Elizabeth Burchett Thompson, Dean, School of Allied Health. Dr. Martin Sellers, Dean, the Paul V. Hamilton School of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. Dr. James Maxwell, Dean of the School of Business. Mr. Jared Boster, Principal, J. Frank White Academy. Ms. Elise Sion, Associate Dean of Students. Let's recognize them. We also have with us delegates from other institutions. What I would ask that all the official delegates please rise so we can thank you for being with us. And the LMU National Alumni Board of Directors, would you please stand? Thank you. Trustees, spouses, and guests, we will recognize you. Delegates, spouses, and guests, if you have some here. The inaugural planning committee, now I know you're here. Thank you for your tireless service. Lincoln Ambassadors and Student Government Association leaders, will you please stand up over here? Thank you for being here. And former First Ladies, Karen, I know you're here. Do we have any others? And now, please join me in welcoming Dr. Autry O. V. Pete DeBusk, LMU alumnus class of 65 and chairman of the LMU Board of Trustees, Dr. DeBusk. Thank you. I, I can't keep from thinking about speeches I've had in the past and um, Sylvia Lynch uh, had a comment earlier tonight, this afternoon that I heard about. She said she had written, written a many a good speech for me and they never got out of my pocket. <laughs> so I'm telling on her a little bit myself. No, I want to go back a ways. We go back about 15 years and we start looking at LMU and there, we set out on a road says, well, look, where is this college head, headed? How are we going to make it survive? How are we going to go forward? What can we do? And we come to the conclusion that graduate education was the route for us, and we were certainly always felt like we were heavy in the sciences, and uh, we'd send a lot of people to medical school out of here and uh, what have you. So we uh, dug in and started on the track of graduate education programs. Well, the first hoop you've got to run, jump through is a big one. It's the Southern Association of Accreditation. So we started down that path and that is where I began to get a real appreciation for Clayton Hess. Those challenges were considerable. But of course we started the medical school and there's no way anyone could have ever had a crystal ball that would have showed us, shown us what was going to happen with this university. Then we went to a PA school, we went to graduate schools in nursing, and um, we were certainly moving at a quick pace. Clayton was there to help us get through all that. I mean, he has an understanding of this college that's just beyond belief. So we come along to veterinary medicine, and that got to be um, quite a challenge. Uh, um, Clayton got us through the first loop, hoop, but then all of a sudden we run into something that this little college had never seen before. The American Veterinary Medical Association Board. 
they were divine. You could tell that they were very close to the good Lord. And uh, what an ordeal. But we worked very diligently to get through that, become the number 30 accredited veterinary medicine school in the United States, which has been a real ride. So we've had a lot of great rides through the years and um, have a lot to be thankful for. And we got a whole lot ahead of us. And we think we got some very good plans to go forward as a university. Very aggressive. And um, I, could, <laughs> I could talk to you all day about that. But anyhow, I wanted to go a little farther here about the, what happened. We had a search committee. We were going to go out and find a new president of the university. So we put the search committee together, and here was Clayton was on the search committee, and we were looking at people, and nobody was getting close. We talked about different people. And all of a sudden, the board, we started comparing our, no our notes. He says, what are we doing? Clayton knows more about this university than anybody on the, fa on the face of the earth. He knows the faculty. He come up through the system. He really knows what's going on. What are we doing outside looking for a president for our university? All of a sudden, everything stopped. Unanimously, the board wanting Clayton to be president. And so that's how we got here today. And he earned every inch of it. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of Lincoln Memorial University's Board of Trustees, it's certainly my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the inauguration of Dr. Clayton Hess. Clayton becomes our 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University. Today is a very special day for a lot of reasons. I also speak for the entire Board of Trustees when I say that uh, we're very proud of I'm going to call him Clayton instead of Dr. Hess, if he doesn't mind. And we're honored to be here to share in this great milestone in his career. We applaud Clayton for his great work, as Pete has said, over the many years of service to LMU. And it's an honor to see him grow and achieve this well-deserved appointment. I know his family, friends are very proud of him. And this remarkable event will be a day that all will treasure. The entire LMU community knows Dr. Hess well, and we're all familiar with the great work that he has done over many years. No matter what position he's held, he's given it all. And this university is a better place today because of his commitment and the good work that he has done. I want to do one little quick personal thing. Uh, he and I were in a conversation a few days ago, and uh, looking back at my memory book, 1981. Thank you, Sylvia. Sylvia reminded me that this would be appropriate, and today seems like a little deja vu of standing on the platform in 1981 as executive vice president. Clayton walked across the stage and received his bachelor's degree. I said to him the other day, I wonder, Clayton, if at that time you ever imagined that you would step into this position today. Oddly enough, at that commencement, I was given an opportunity in this institution later in the summer to become president as well. And that's something that he and I will always share and have in common, I suppose. Dr. Hess, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, we pledge our full support to you as you begin your role as president. We look forward to being a part of your plans for Lincoln Memorial University. And while you've been a very good and faithful servant, it's now time for you to lead. Again, on behalf of the Board of Trustees, congratulations. And a special thanks to all of you here today for sharing in this very special occasion. Thank you. Good afternoon. On behalf of the beautiful city of Harrogate and the citizens of our extended community, it's my privilege to bring greetings to you, Dr. Hess, 
as you officially step into your role as the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial. The relationship between the city of Harrogate and this outstanding institution has continued to grow stronger for generations. Thousands of students have called Harrogate home while they pursued their education on this campus. LMU has always been a vital part of our community. How exciting that within our small town, we enjoy such a rich culture from the blend of doctors, nurses, educators, veterinarians, and business professionals, all attributed to Lincoln Memorial University. Dr. Hess, you have a long and rich legacy, beginning as a student here and later working in a number of positions here at LMU. Now it is your turn to lead. You carry a wealth of experience, and we are confident that under your leadership, LMU will continue to be a vital part of the Harrogate community and the surrounding area. We are eager to hear your plans for the future of LMU and how the city of Harrogate can be of assistance. Dr. Hess, we look forward to working with you and are confident you will continue to serve LMU with the same devotion and commitment you've demonstrated over the many years you've been here. We wish you well, and again, on behalf of the community, Congratulations on your appointment as president. Thank you. Dr. Hess, Chairman DeBusk, honored guests and friends. It is my honor to represent the more than 30,000 alumni of Lincoln Memorial University as we celebrate the inauguration of Dr. Clayton Hess as the 21st president of our university. Our alumni take very seriously their roles as stewards of the university. They support LMU with their time, their financial resources, their expertise, and their enthusiasm. And yes, sometimes their support comes in the form of serving as president of the institution that they love so much. Dr. Hess, alum who have sat in the seat that you're sitting in today include Dr. Gary Joe Burchett, Dr. Jerry Bishop, Dr. Martin Peters, and Dr. Robert Kincaid. Some of our graduates who have gone on to serve as president of other institutions include Dr. Walter D. Smith, who was president of Francis Marion College, and Dr. George Emmett, who served as president of Utah State University. Each of these outstanding leaders left their marks on their respective institutions and on society, bringing honor to their alumni. We know Dr. Clayton Hess to be a man of integrity and wisdom. He is devoted to his family, and he is fully committed to all the programs at LMU. He is nationally known as a consultant for accreditation, and he has been proven already to keep LMU moving forward and successful with the work that he has done in various positions. Dr. Hess is always willing to learn from others, a perfect quality for his new role and the need for keeping pace in today's ever-changing world. Dr. Hess, I am very thankful that my father, my brother, my sister, and I all attended LMU. I count it a privilege to be an alum from an institution that embraces its graduates and supports them staying engaged in this university. We celebrate with you today, Dr. Hess, and we pledge our support to you and the good work that we know that you are going to do. We welcome your leadership. You have served in many positions at LMU, and now you serve as our leader, our 21st president. Welcome, President Hess.
It's an honor for me to be here this afternoon for the inauguration of Dr. Hess. I began working with Dr. Hess a little over nine years ago when I first came to LMU to assist with the creation of the law school. And to be candid, our relationship got off to a rocky start. In one of our very first meetings, I made a comment about the law school, and Dr. Hess quickly pointed out to me that we were not yet a law school. After a few unpleasantries, he informed me that we were nothing more than a business card. Although, we were, although he was correct, we were not off to a good start. However, after working side by side almost every day for months and really years, I now call him a dear friend. Now in the next few moments, I'm going to tell you about three things. A rule, a philosophy, and a temperament. In 1960, Tom Monahan founded Domino's Pizza. It grew to be the largest pizza franchise in America. As the franchise grew, Mr. Monahan had a rule. One could not own a Domino's Pizza franchise unless that person had worked in every position in a store. You had to deliver pizza, answer phones, make pizza, clean the restaurant, and order supplies. His philosophy was not that this experience just made you better at running the restaurant. No, his philosophy was that this experience made you better as an employer at a better boss. If a delivery driver came to you with a problem, you likely had experienced the same problem. If there was an issue with quality control, you knew why. If employees performed exceedingly well, you appreciated it and recognized it. You knew what they experienced, how they experienced it, and could better handle the challenges that came with the leadership of a Domino's. Unlike most university presidents, Clayton Hess is much like the owner of a Domino's franchise. He went to school here as an undergraduate student. He received two master's degrees here. He's worked in admissions. He's worked in advancement, in student services, in placement, in counseling, in institutional effectiveness, in institutional research, and in academic affairs. And of great importance to the faculty, he's been a teacher. Now, at first blush, it might appear that Dr. Hess simply cannot hold a job. <laughs> but in truth, these experiences have prepared him for the most important job of all, that of our leader. Now, if we reflect on Tom Monahan's rule, we might see a tremendous flaw. Working in each capacity benefits you with the experiences of those who would become your employees and the experiences necessary to run, run a Domino's pizza franchise. But the great flaw is found in what it does not teach you. The experience does not inform you as to how your competitors are doing, what they may do right, what they may do wrong, where they might expand, where they might improve, and where they might need to shore things up. No, Mr. Monahan's rule didn't account for these things. But Lincoln Memorial University is no pizza joint, and Dr. Hess is no regular employee. In the last decade alone, Dr. Hess has been involved in the accreditation process of 52 institutions. Additionally, he's consulted with 10 institutions. Candidly, he is the go-to guy when a school is in trouble. But why do we, LMU, care? Because it means that our leader has seen what other uni universities have done right, what they've done wrong, where they might expand, where they might improve, and where they might need to shore things up this institutional knowledge he brings with this position. Next is philosophy. The successful businessman Richard Branson has said that he believes the most important principles of leadership, and these may surprise you, are listening, learning, and laughter. Now, if anyone has spent any time with Dr. Hess, one thing they either know or quickly learn is that he is a very active listener. And much to the dismay of many, he rarely forgets what was said. As Branson said, listening enables us to learn from each other, from the marketplace, and from the mistakes that must be made in order to get anywhere. The second trait is learning. Branson posits that learning and leadership go hand in hand. I dare say that in addition to his time at LMU, those 52 institutions that he has worked with have made Dr. Hess a lifelong learner. And finally, Branson's number one rule he calls laughter, he simply defines as enjoying what you do. There's no doubt that Dr. Hess enjoys his job. Who else would be up 
at 11.30 at night reading reports, whether from LMU or other institutions. Who else would work with someone until 3 o'clock in the morning, only to begin again a few hours later at 9 a.m.? Who else makes a habit of helping other institutions? Who else goes out of his way to help his colleagues? If you will forgive me, Dr. Hess, you don't have a life. You have LMU. But unlike some who toil in careers only waiting to go home and get out of the office, other than your kids and your grandkids, you live and breathe LMU. The last point I want to make is temperament. LMU has a long and storied history. And although I've heard many of the stories of various successes, accomplishments, and challenges, I also have personal knowledge of some of these. It's easy to be a great leader when times are good. The test is being a great leader when times are tough. That is the test of one's mettle. And Dr. Hess and I have stood shoulder to shoulder during some extremely challenging times. One evening, when he and I were alone, I had occasion to ask him something that had been on my mind. Clayton, I asked, through all of the difficulty we faced, through all of the challenges, through all of the battles, I have never seen you get rattled. How do you do it? His response was concise. Sid, when you've been through what I've been through, when you've experienced what have I've experienced, these challenges pale in comparison. So moving forward, regardless of LMU's road ahead, I'm confident we have found a leader who has worked in virtually every position in the store, who has mastered the three important traits of leadership and has a temperament that we could all aspire to. So Dr. Hess, on behalf of the faculty at Lincoln Memorial University, we welcome you as our next president. I first met Dr. Hess in 1977. At that time, he was just Clayton, a young entering freshman from Rich Valley High School in Saltville, Virginia. He had no problems adjusting to college. He pledged to Gamma Lambda Sigma fraternity and became active in many of the student activities provided on campus. During his college career, he was an outspoken advocate for students' rights and at times a thorn in the administration's side. I hope he remembers that. Uh, after graduation, Clayton was offered a position with LMU as an admissions counselor. He was dedicated to his job. Often, he would show up for work even when he wasn't supposed to, on his days off, on Saturdays, or when the campus was closed due to ice and snow. One day when he was supposed to be at work, he didn't show up, and no one knew where he was. He called in around 10 o'clock, and I asked him, why he wasn't at work and where he was. He replied, I'm in Canada. Mrs. Watson was taking a group of students on a trip and they didn't have anyone to drive, so I volunteered to drive them. Dr. Hess completed his two masters and doctoral degree while he was working full time in the admissions office. I'm not sure who was more relieved when he completed his degree, him or those of us who were his friends. I would often get a call or someone would stop in the office and say, you need to talk to Clayton. He's driving down the valley again, reading a book on the steering wheel. Fortunately, the only thing that paid the price was a dog that ran out in front of him, which really didn't run out in front of him. It was dead before he hit it. <laughs> I'm not sure our people in maintenance will ever forget him, forgive him for having to clean up that mess. Since his time in admissions, Dr. Hess has helped several administrative positions. It may be the pressure of those positions, or perhaps it's just that he's getting old, but he seems to have developed a speech impediment. It's difficult for him to say a complete sentence without using a number, 3.1, 3.4, 3.5. <laughs> I've been told that these numbers are very important and pertain to our accreditation. Most of us don't know what these numbers mean, but we're glad that Dr. Hess does. Those of us that have known Dr. Hess for a number of years have watched his children grow up on campus. We've shared his pain and grief in losing a family member. We have seen him grow from an immature college freshman who was never shy to a confident college administrator, 
However, in the more than 40 years that I've known him, two things haven't changed. His loyalty for LMU and his commitment to the students we serve. It's a privilege for me on behalf of the staff to welcome Dr. Clayton Hess as our 21st president. Good afternoon. On behalf of the Student Government Association and the entire student body of Lincoln Memorial University, I would like to welcome everyone to the inauguration of the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University, Dr. Clayton Hess. This is an historic day as we come together to celebrate the past, the present, and the future of this great university. President Hess joins a long line of remarkable people who have served in the role as president at LMU. They have worked tirelessly to ensure that LMU maintain the level of excellence for which it had been long recognized. Throughout his many roles at LMU, Dr. Hess has been a vital part of the campus community. And from day one as president, he has offered his full support to the student body. Dr. Hess has heard our voices and he has listened to our concerns. Dr. Hess, on behalf of this entire student body, I carry the message that we ask only one thing from you. It is our wish that you continue to challenge us to be the best that we can be, not only as students, but as professionals and the good citizens we hope to become. We know the journey as we work toward our degree is not only about getting good grades and graduating, it is about discovering who we are and who we want to become as we leave this place to pursue our life's work. We want you to know that we will carry with us everything we have learned, both in and out of the classroom. The values and the life lessons we will gain during our time at Lincoln Memorial University will help us change the world in ways that we can't even imagine. And so Dr. Hess, on behalf of the student body, we pledge our full support to you as you move ahead on your journey as the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University. We are proud to know that together we can make a lasting difference. We know that your forward thinking and your servant leadership are assurances that anything is possible at this university and in our lives after we have finished here. The compassion that you have shown for the faculty, staff, and students is a touchstone for the excellent excellence that is sure to follow in the coming years. Once again, on behalf of my fellow students, I want to extend my warmest welcomes to you, Dr. Hess, and to your family. It is, a great honor that, it is with great honor that I stand here today, and I look forward to working with you and the student body as we do our part to ensure the successfulness of Lincoln Memorial University. Good afternoon. My name is Terry Slosher. I'm a alumnus of LMU, and I met Clayton Hess when we were Pledge Brothers in the winter class of 1979 in the Gamma Fraternity. That was long before he became Dr. Clayton Hess. So I was honored when Clayton asked me if I would participate in today's ceremony and introduce his family. The first thought I had was I can have some real fun with this. Little Devil Terry popped up on this shoulder. Little Angel Terry didn't come up. And if you ask my wife, Lena, Little Angel Terry doesn't exist. So I would talk with Clayton over the course of time about, do you remember this? And he'd laugh a little bit, and then he'd say, you can't talk about that. <laughs> and this would keep going on. So pretty soon I found out that I wasn't allowed to talk about pledging or the fraternity. I wasn't allowed to talk about anything that took place at the Stone House, and if you went to school back then, you know what the Stone House was. Wasn't allowed to talk about anything that happened during any of the interfraternity football games. And I wasn't even allowed to talk about the things that took place when I was best man at his wedding. So I hope you've enjoyed my very short talk today. <laughs> but today I do have the privilege to introduce some very important people. Dr. Hess's family members who are here today to share in this event. It's certain that each of them has had a role in Dr. Hess's success, and I know that they're very proud of him. I'm going to ask his family members to stand as I call their names. Some of them that I've got names for may not be present. That's okay, stand anyway. I'm going to start with Dr. Hess's siblings. Linda Lyles, his sister. 
James Hess, his brother. John Hess, his brother. Before introducing his children and grandchildren, I also want to introduce Miss Deborah Verna, their mother and grandmother respectively. And now his children, Bradley Clayton Hess, his son, Brooke Hess, Kenny Hess, and Casey Worley, his daughter. And is John Worley here? No? Okay. Next are the family members who have given Dr. Hess his greatest joy, his grandchildren. And by the way, if you've ever looked at his Facebook page, you know that is the absolute truth, because that's all he posts pictures of. And by the way, that also means that you're the president of Lincoln Memorial University is very tech savvy. Who can complain about him posting pictures of his grandchildren on Facebook? Brianna Hess. Daniel Hess. Colin Abbott. Ethan Hess. And Kaylin Hess. We are also pleased to have with us today Dr. Hess's cousins, Mark Hess, his wife Sue, and their daughter Hannah, who I understand is a student here at LMU. Barry Hess, his wife Anita, and their daughter Kelly. And his niece Lori Murdoch, her husband Derek, and sons Lucas and Landon. So let's give them a big hand. Please have a seat. So, in closing today, Clayton, on behalf of your family and many friends who are here or were unable to come today, I just want to let you know that we're all proud of your many accomplishments to date and of those that we know are sure to come as Lincoln Memorial University's newest president. And I want you to know that from all of us, we're sure that this leadership of this school could not be in better hands today. Thank you. What a lovely family. We're delighted that you are here today. Chairman DeBusk, President Hess, members of the platform party, distinguished guests, students, faculty, staff, and alumni. What a grand day it is to be on the campus of Lincoln Memorial University. On this special day, we inaugurate the 21st president of this fine institution. Clayton, I can assure you that all assembled are excited about your leadership. But I can tell you that one person here is ecstatic. And that's my wife, Karen, <laughs> seated over here. When O. Howard and Reverend Myers were motivated under the admonition of President Lincoln to create an institution, they conceived of this school and they envisioned it as an expression of gratitude for the citizens of the area who had remained loyal to the Union during the Civil War and of equal importance, it was to forever be a living memorial to President Lincoln. These individuals could neither predict nor imagine the impact of their work for the Southern Appalachian region and even beyond. LMU has become a center of hope for the entire region it is a cultural focal point, a recreational hub, and without question, a learning community of tremendous consequence. This institution, which has existed for a century and two decades, has evolved into a learning community of unparalleled significance. It has grown to become a level six university that is recognized as a comprehensive institution of higher education. 
To be the president of this unique place is an honor and indeed a position of tremendous responsibility. President Hess is without question the right person for the position at this time. You've heard so much about him by those who brought greetings. He brings a wealth of experience, more than three decades of dedicated service to Lincoln Memorial University, and a passion for the mission of our fine school. No one knows better than Dr. Hess the importance of providing hope for the future. He is a product of this school, a lifetime resident of the region, and so today we say not only congratulations, but we also challenge him to lead our precious LMU to new standards of excellence. It was Confucius who said, education creates confidence and confidence leads to hope. The students who choose to learn here must have hope that their efforts will lead to a better life. The individuals who invest in the university must have hope that their resources will create a better and stronger society. The faculty who invest their time, energy, and knowledge in this educational enterprise must know that they are challenging minds to be curious. And the parents, many of whom are paying the bills, must have hope that their efforts will enhance the lives of their sons and daughters and that they will ultimately get off the payroll. Yes, President Hess, you are assigned an enormous responsibility. But you will find that you are also the recipient of countless blessings. Enjoy the mantle of leadership that you will accept today and know that you are providing hope for years to come. You and your entire family will make sacrifices to ensure the future here. Your time will become increasingly precious, and your waking hours, if possible, will be extended. But each day you will know that your work is appreciated. I encourage you to seek a balance in your life. It is just as important be the great, greatest granddaddy as it is to be the Grand Poobah. Each day this living memorial to Abraham Lincoln will grow in reputation and become a stronger academic community because you have committed to the leadership of your alma mater. One thing we do know about education is that it's much more than the transmission of knowledge. It is the expansion of awareness and the acceptance of responsibility associated with the privilege of learning. Alan Alda, addressing a graduating class of medical students, indicated to those assembled that there was one thing he could tell them that only a non-physician could say. The head bone is connected to the heart bone and never let the connection be severed. Knowing without caring is a shallow achievement. We must make the connection between the knowledge received here and the need to translate that in a way that transforms the lives of individuals. To care about the world we live in is essential as the distance between cultures, nations, and societies becomes increasingly compressed. Educated individuals must still must be instilled with the responsibility to care about the human race and to seek answers to the causes of separation which haunt us and certainly will haunt generations to come. If there is hope for the future, it lies in the lives of well-educated and sensitive individuals who will not settle for an unjust world. When he was mayor of New York City, Rudolph Giuliani had on his desk a simple slogan. It read, I am responsible. Yes, accepting responsibility is the price of leadership, but it is also an indication that you care enough to make things right. President Hess, you will often be called upon to make things right, and that will require all of your inner strength 
and the cooperation and the support of the entire academic community. All of you together can put things in order. When that task is completed, you will know that cooperation and consensus are powerful tools. Hope survives when there is evidence that a just solution is sought, and as a leader, you are willing to make it become reality. There is a verse in Proverbs which reads, people will be more impressed by the depth of your conviction than the height of your logic. The president of LMU will always be expected to be logical, but of equal importance, I believe, will be the need for all to know your conviction. Let them see that in your actions. Now, as you know, I enjoy the distinct privilege of being recognized as a president emeritus here at LMU. Among many things that means that for all practical purposes, I am retired. Oh yes, I will stay involved because I share the passion for the mission here. But on most days, I'm enjoying a little more freedom than previously was available to me. Among other things, I play golf with a group of folks about my age. They are, for the most part, retired corporate exec executives. After golf, we gather around tables and tell stories. As a newcomer to the group, I was asked, what did you sell? Remember, these are corporate executives. You either make it or you sell it. That's the rule. My response without hesitation was, I sell hope. We all understand that education has a price tag. If we are to be successful as institutions of higher education, we must provide for our students the hope of a brighter future. And that hope must be perceived as worth the investment. On many occasions, I have heard President Hess say that hope is not a plan. I could not agree more. However, I do believe that a thoughtful plan properly executed can provide hope for all. President Hess, my hope for you is a presidency filled with enjoyment and prosperity. President Lincoln, writing to Joshua Giddings, said, May the Almighty grant that the cause of truth, justice, and humanity shall in no wise suffer at my hand. I am confident that you share that sentiment, but of equal importance, I am confident that you will work daily to ensure that your alma mater only prospers under your hand. May your leadership provide hope for all who embrace Lincoln Memorial University. Hallelujah, his truth is marching, truth is marching, truth. 
It is my personal pleasure and great honor to take part in this ceremony to install Dr. E. Clayton Hess, leader and educator, as the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University. Dr. Hess, the Board of Trustees, is confident that LMU will continue its remarkable growth under your leadership. We believe that we have selected an innovative leader with a clear vision of how to navigate the changes that are coming in higher education. Your distinguished service to this institution over three decades includes roles in virtually every division on campus. It gives you tremendous institutional knowledge. You have the full support of the Board of Trustees. On behalf of the Board of Trustees of Lincoln Memorial University and under the charter of the state of Tennessee, I hereby install you in the office of president and place over your shoulders the seal of the university, the symbol of the high office which you now hold. Now present to all here assembled, Dr. E. Clayton Hess, who today is charged with the full weight and responsibility as the 21st president of Lincoln Memorial University.
good afternoon, and thank you so much. I feel compelled to say up front that finding the right words to express my appreciation today has been much harder than I thought it would be. It is difficult for me to truly express what this day means to me. I can say, however, that I am honored and deeply humbled by the remarks of all those who have spoken here this afternoon. And I am grateful to everyone who had a part in making this day possible. I love the theme of this event. The legacy continues. It has been mentioned several times today that I have a long history here. And one of the greatest honors of my appointment as president is the privilege I now have to continue the good work that is already underway. To see my name listed with the remarkable leaders who have served in this office before me is humbling. I want to begin by saying that I am aware that I have big shoes to fill and that I am honored by the confidence the Board of Trustees has placed in me. Chairman DeBusk and several members of the Board of Trustees have devoted time and effort to helping me adjust to the challenges of the role of president, and I appreciate their guidance. I am grateful that they have entrusted me with this remarkable opportunity, and I extend my sincerest appreciation to Dr. James Dawson for his excellent work during his tenure here as president. Dr. Dawson, you have left the House in good order. Thank you for your solid foundation on which we can build and for your continued guidance and sound advice. But this day is not really about me. It is about Lincoln Memorial University. Today's LMU is a very different institution than the one I knew when I enrolled here as a freshman in 1977. I would be remiss if I didn't quote our namesake at least once on this occasion. In March of 1832, in his first political announcement, Lincoln addressed the importance of education. And we have used his words here at LMU on many occasions. He said that he viewed education as the most important subject which we as a people can be engaged in. I like this statement for a number of reasons. I believe that when our founder, General O.O. O. Howard, was thinking of how he could best fulfill his promise to President Lincoln to do something for the people of this region who had remained loyal to the Union, the notion of ensuring the people had access to an education was a perfect offering. Lincoln knew the power of education when it comes to improving the quality of life and the opportunity to achieve one's dream. In fact, I believe it is the perfect fulfillment of Lincoln's request. I sometimes wonder what Howard and Lincoln would think of the LMU of today. I have been here for over 40 years, and even though I have seen it firsthand, I am amazed at the growth and far-reaching impact the university has had on the region it serves. I also believe that Lincoln was correct. Education is the most important subject in which we can engage. And I believe that is why our work here is so important. LMU started with the mission to serve its region. And for the past 120 years, we have done just that. But the region we serve, in fact the entire world, is a different place than the place it was when Howard took action to fulfill Lincoln's request. LMU's impact has spread throughout the Appalachian region and far beyond. To become an institution of national significance, with alumni living and working all over this country and in many places around the world. As I think about continuing the legacy and the importance of staying true to the mission and vision of LMU, I know that it is the people who have worked here over the years people at all levels, who have made that admission a reality. And today, as I start this work, I call upon the support of all those 
who play a role in what we do here. It will take all of us to continue the positive course we now enjoy. I am fortunate that I am coming into this role at a period of remarkable growth and exciting new initiatives for the institution. I would like to share some highlights of my vision for moving forward as we continue to build on the strong foundation of Lincoln Memorial University. I have often heard our chairman of the board, Dr. Pete DeBusk, talk about raising the bar. And I know it is a direction our board, our faculty, staff and students, and our alumni and supporters want us to continue. I intend to stay true to that challenge. We will continue to identify and establish new educational programs to meet the needs of our region and the nation. We will expand into new areas of health care to better serve our region and provide new opportunities for students. We will also expand in other areas that our service region desperately needs to grow and sustain stronger communities. LMU is rightly recognized for the quality of its academic programs, programs that prepare our graduates for successful careers, and we want to expand access to this type of programs. The LMU community has greatly expanded its borders over the past few years. We will continue to explore unique and innovative opportunities to reach out to local, state, national, and even international communities for the benefit of the students we serve. We will launch additional teaching sites for the delivery of new academic programs while continue in the, the tradition of ensuring the quality of these programs. The importance of dedicated support for faculty scholarship and creativity cannot be overemphasized. As a level six institution, we must step up our commitment to and support for these kinds of activities. We have an exemplary faculty, and I want to ensure that we are facilitating their continued professional growth and scholarship so that LMU becomes even better recognized for the quality of its faculty and their work. We will also help to ensure that our students have the benefit of instruction by faculty that are current in their discipline. Closely aligned with this is a commitment to strengthen and enhance the area of student support and success. We must never forget that students are our business, not only our business, they are our responsibility. And we must do everything that we can to fully support their personal and academic success. Students are at the center of all we do here at LMU. I am sure that many of you remember, as I do, those who helped us to develop the skills and characteristics necessary to excel in a demanding college environment. We have restructured our administration to focus on student success, and we fully expect that our students will benefit from our rededication to supporting their academic and social success. The growth and improvement of our physical plant over recent years is astounding. I can remember when the quad was, in essence, the campus. Now LMU extends all the way to Tampa, Florida, and we have state-of-the-art teaching, residential, and athletic facilities. The commitment of our Board of Trustees to ensuring that LMU's facilities are first class has transformed our campus in recent years, and today we have one of the most attractive and functional campuses in the region. We will continue to improve our facilities. We will also continue to involve the community around us in the life of the institution. LMU serves as a social and cultural center for the region, and I hope that we can find new ways to expand that role and work with our local community to enhance the benefits to our students and to our community. In closing, I want to say thank you again to my family, to the Board of Trustees, to our campus leadership, 
to our faculty and staff, and to our alumni and supporters, and most of all to our students. I ask for your continued support, and I want you to know that I'm going to do my best to continue to move Lincoln Memorial University forward by taking advantage of the strong foundation our trustees and previous university administrations have built. As we begin the next phase in our history, I am committed to do my very best to ensure that the legacy continues at this outstanding institution. Thank you. Good afternoon. It's always a privilege to have the opportunity to be a witness to history. And today, all of us have been given that privilege. On this day, Dr. Clayton Hess has officially accepted the role of president. And in doing so, his name is added to a distinguished list of exemplary leaders. Our speakers today have all concurred that Lincoln Memorial University has a long and successful history. Much of that success has been the result of extraordinary leadership and dedicated service. Dr. Hess, I want to add my best wishes to those already offered. You've already given above and beyond service to this institution throughout your long tenure here. I know I speak for the board, the faculty, the staff, students, and alumni when I say that we are confident that you will continue to do your job with the same level of devotion and professionalism you've always offered. Thank you for stepping up, and please know that you have the full support of all of us gathered here today as you begin what we know will be your best efforts on behalf of Lincoln Memorial University. Congratulations. If you will, Please stand and join me in singing the alma mater, which is on page 16 of your program. I'm sure you all know it. Join me as we pray. Gracious and faithful God, we ask that your favor and grace will rest upon the Lincoln Memorial family and your chosen servant, Clayton Hess. In this place of learning and faith, may scholarship and service thrive and flourish. We pray now that you will do immeasurably more than we ask, think, or imagine. In the leadership of President Hess and the unfolding legacy of this university, bless Lincoln Memorial as this school provides educational experiences in a values-based learning community that is committed to teaching, research, and service. We ask that you bless your servant Clayton and increase his life with faith, wisdom, discernment, and compassion. Throughout his administration, may he act justly, love mercy, and always walk humbly with you, O God. And now may the love of the Father, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us on this day and always. In Christ, through Christ, and for the glory of Christ, we pray. 
Amen.